In this video, we're going to talk about the two auto-hide windows we can use to work with files, Format Explorer and File Explorer. In the Format Explorer window, we can configure our preferences for reading or saving the different image formats. The extension shows us all the preferences at a glance. If we double-click on one of the formats, the configuration menu opens. For example, if we double-click on JPEG, we can select the default image quality used when we compress and save the image. This is very useful because it means we can speed up the process of saving in JPEG format. Imagine that instead of just one image, we have 20 images open and we need to save those 20 images in JPEG format. To save a file, we go to File, then Save As, or press Ctrl, Shift, and S. If we save it as a JPEG, the default quality we have configured in the Format Explorer appears. If we want to save it at the highest possible quality level, we have to change the value to 100. If we want to save lots of images, we'll have to change the value each time. However, if we change the image quality setting in Format Explorer, when we go to save the image as a JPEG, the image quality setting will automatically be 100. Another interesting format to look at is the RAW format from digital cameras. Here we can configure how the program decodes this format. As we all know, because digital cameras take color photographs, they use a Bayer pattern. Here we have two main adjustments. The first is pure RAW, and the second is demosaicked RGB. If we want to view the images, the best option is to demosaic or debayer. If we go to the computer's own file explorer and drag and drop this raw image, we get a color version of the image. Although it's in color and debayered, the image is still linear because it's almost all dark. We can press Ctrl A to do a contrast adjustment and see the nonlinear image. Now we can see lots of information that we couldn't see before when the image was in its linear state. We can also choose to view the image in pure raw. This gives us a black and white image because digital cameras are actually monochrome cameras with color filters over the sensor. This means that each individual pixel has a color filter over it, but raw images are actually grayscale images. So each pixel represents the brightness in each of those filters. We can also see the filters if we select RAW and check the Create RAW RGB Image checkbox. This shows the color of each pixel, even if this isn't really a raw image. We can also check the Create Super Pixels option, which simply combines the four pixels from the Bayer filter to make one pixel. This generates a color image at half the resolution, but without using any interpolation. It's very important to understand that these preferences don't affect the pre-processing of the raw image at all. We can configure the settings so that the program displays the debayered raw image, and we can pre-process with WBPP without having to change these settings to pure raw. This is because the tools and scripts in PixInsight have what we call format hints. These are parameters that force the Format Preferences window to modify its parameters so that PixInsight reads the image in the right way at any given moment. This means that although we have the demosaic RGB settings configured here, when WBPP reads these images, it will do it using the pure RAW settings. It's also important to note that a raw image taken from a digital camera is different from a color image with a Bayer mosaic pattern taken using an astronomical camera. Here, for example, we have an image of M33 in color. 
This is the raw image, and we can see the Bayer pattern. But this was taken with an astrophotography camera. To debayer this type of image, we need to go to Process Explorer, select Color Spaces, then Debayer. We select the Bayer pattern our camera uses. This is the new color linear image. We press Ctrl A and now we can see that M33's nebulas are red. This color image is saved in FITS format. This format is used in PixInsight to read data only. FITS format is already obsolete in PixInsight because it has serious limitations. PixInsight's native format is EXIF and we can change its preferences settings too. One of the main advantages of EXIF over FITS is that it contains much more metadata. In FITS format, keywords must have a specific number of characters, and this isn't the case with EXIF format. For example, in EXIF format, we can save the screen contrast adjustment. We can save the whole processing history as well. We also have options to compress files without losing data. Let's open an EXIF file. This is the master H-alpha image, in other words, the integrated image. Why is it that we can see the content of this image even though it is a linear image? Because this image has a screen contrast adjustment saved in it. We know this because we can see this green line here. We can toggle it on or off by clicking this button with a screen symbol at the top. What's happening here is that when we load the image, it opens with the correct display adjustments. We talk about these adjustments in more detail in the videos about the Screen Transfer Function tool. Finally, although EXIF format has compression options, remember that compressing files can slow down some pre-processing processes significantly. For example, the image integration process needs to access complete blocks of pixels, but it can only access these blocks after the image has been decompressed. This means that it has to decompress the whole file before reading it, which makes the process take longer. In this video, we've been opening images using the computer's own file explorer, but PixInsight has its own built-in file explorer, which is optimized for use with astrophotography images. If we want to open the root directory or any other folder on our computer, we have to click on the More Than symbol. We're going to open the TMP directory by double-clicking on its name here. Then we open the M43 directory. Here we have a series of four images with RGB filters applied. When we click on one of them, a preview opens at the bottom of the screen. Remember, these images are linear. In fact, if we drag and drop one of them onto the workspace, we can see that it's very dark because it's a linear image. We need to press Ctrl-A to see it. What File Explorer does is apply another screen contrast adjustment to each image. So we can click through a series of linear images and see a preview of each one and its histogram, which is usually a very steep peak on the left. We can also use File Explorer to add input images to the tools. If we go to Image Integration, we can add the R images, for example. Of course, we can select the images we want one by one by pressing Ctrl and clicking on the file names, but it's much easier to use a wildcard. If we type, we can select them all, drag them and drop them in the Input Images field of the Image Integration window. Now we can configure the tool and apply it. In Image Integration, we can also open each image in the list by double-clicking on it. There are two more auto-hide windows in PixInsight, Object Explorer and Script Editor. We're not going to look at these because these tools are aimed at programmers. And finally, we have History Explorer, which we talk about separately in other videos.